Is the neutrino its own antiparticle? This question stands on the forefront of physics and the standard model. All fermions, a type of particle, have their own antiparticle. The electron's antiparticle is the positron, the quark's antiparticle is the antiquark. Quarks make baryons like neutrons and protons. Antiquarks make antibaryons like antiprotons and antineutrons. We know of these particle antiparticle pairs, but whether or not the neutrino is its own antiparticle remains a mystery. Let's first define the neutrino. It is an uncharged particle, hence the name neutrino, meaning little neutral one. It is a fundamental particle, meaning it is not made up of any smaller parts. The neutrino is classified as a fermion, specifically a lepton in the standard model. Unlike other fermions, the neutrino and the antineutrino might be the same particle. Its story starts in 1931, when Wolfgang Pauli proposed its existence. He observed a violation in the conservation of energy in beta decay. Beta decay involves a neutron decaying into a proton while releasing an electron. But something was missing. According to the law of conservation of energy, the amount of energy within a closed system must be conserved unless an outside force changes that. This means that the energy of the neutron must equal the sum of the products after decaying. The sum of the energy of the proton and electron was missing a small amount of energy. So he hypothesized the neutrino, a small neutral particle that would not violate conservation of charge and would account for the missing energy as well. In 1959, Clyde Cohen and Fred Raines discovered the particle, and now physicists are on the hunt to detect neutrinos to learn more about them. They spent years trying to capture them and detect them, but despite how numerous they are, they are so small and so fast that they can zip through light years of light without being detected. After years of improving our detectors, Eww. today we know that neutrinos can change flavors. There's the electron neutrino, muon neutrino, and tau neutrino. In other words, different versions of themselves. They also have very, very, very small mass. Lastly, we know that they have half integral spin, so they are classified as fermions in the standard model. In 1932, Dirac said that fermion particles have antiparticle pairs. But in 1937, Ettore Majorana suggested that the neutrino were its own antiparticle. Such fermions are called Majorana. We have not found Majorana fermions before, so this would add new physics to the standard model, and we will have to change it in how we understand particles. If we find that neutrinos are their own antiparticles, it will answer many questions and raise many questions. It can answer the long-asked question of why we have so much more matter than antimatter. It would also break lepton number conservation, changing our current standard model. To determine whether or not the neutrino is its own antiparticle, we will look at double beta decay, an event theorized by Maria Gopert Mayer in 1935. Double beta decay is when two beta decays happen simultaneously. Two years later, Majorana said that her theory would be true if neutrinos were their own antiparticle. In 1939, Wendell H. Furry proposed that if neutrinos were Majorana, we wouldn't see any neutrinos in double beta decay since they would annihilate each other. Here we have the idea of neutrinoless double beta decay. The energy of annihilation would be absorbed by the electrons, and if we see a peak of energy and can confirm the conservation of energy, we will have proved the Majorana nature of neutrinos. Let's review that again. 1. Double beta decay happens. 2. The neutrinos annihilate into energy. 3. The electrons absorb that energy, so now they have more energy. 4. Outside of the broad energy spectrum, we see a peak in the high energy range. 5. The peak of high energy particles is the electrons, and because of the conservation of energy, we can conclude that the extra energy came from the neutrino's annihilation. 6. We prove the Majorana nature of neutrinos. Simple, right? Unfortunately not. Weak interactions are rare. Second-order weak interactions like neutrinoless double beta decay are even rare. Background noise from nearby radioactive substances may also camouflage that peak. We must refine our experiments so that we can observe these processes and identify them without doubt. A current experiment looking at neutrinoless double beta decay is called the Majorana Demonstrator. The experiment consists of a system of germanium detectors in an ultra-low background environment deep underground in a clean room. Because of the low probability of seeing neutrinoless double beta decay, we use germanium, which has a relatively high probability of decaying double beta. To prevent cosmic radiation from interfering with our readings by showing up as their own peaks, 
in which an electron peak could easily be lost and gone unnoticed. The detector is also kept underground. Noise reduction and low background environments are also challenges that we must face. We have overcome many obstacles to learn all that we currently know. Our detectors have gotten much better over the years and, and we finally know that the, that the neutrino has mass. But why does the neutrino have such a small mass? Speaking of antimatter, it has been asked time and time again. Why does the universe have so much more matter than antimatter? Proving the Majorana nature of neutrinos brings us one step closer to answering these questions. As elusive as the neutrino is, it still disrupts everything in its path. No matter how fast the neutrino moves, we all still turn and scratch our heads. Whoa, who, what, what? <laughs> all right, yeah. <laughs> And then you come in. No matter how fast a neutrino moves, we all still turn. Whoa! And then I like to tend the ball. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Small mess. You just. <laughs> <sighs> Stress. I hate acting. <laughs> Thank you.